Well, here's the dog kennel panels that I didn't use. Okay, I cut off a bucket handle. It's thicker and it's heavy duty. The only thing is it's got an extra twist on the end. Okay, cut the wire longer this time. longer. Variable speed is not really a variable speed. Did we do anything? Yeah. Just how we're going to get the thing out of there now. to go. But it's definitely not working the way it does on the internet. Of course I could be doing the whole thing wrong but that's beside the point. Ouch. Drill just fell on my foot. I could leave it like that and just cut a whole bunch of them. That works. That is definitely not going anywhere. So I'm going to try it over here without the camera. Maybe it's the camera that's causing all the problems. Right. Finally figured it out. That's close, but this is the way it's supposed to turn out. And I figured out on all the videos, they're doing a flat surface. They're not trying to connect a corner. And that makes a big difference because they have more room to work. Unfortunately, this is one of those jobs that you have to do a whole bunch of stuff before you can do the job. And I'm not ripping out my artichoke. I will figure out a way to get it over there, leave enough space that I can get behind and trim back the Cape Honeysuckle on a regular basis. But I'm kind of done for. This is where the dogs had ripped out three of the panels. So that's going to be my door. I'm going to take wire cutters or bolt cutters and just cut up one set. Make sure it's wide enough that I can get stuff in there. Okay. Need to tie this corner together and cut out all that wire. Luckily I didn't put the wires on this side. Otherwise it would be like painting myself into a corner because I didn't bring the bolt cutters all the way out. Well, I think I have it figured out. It makes all the difference in the world if you're on the inside or the outside. Where do I put, to put this so I can get scratched all the time? don't need that extra long tails. Okay, let's see if we can fit between the camera. And variable speed drill is not really a variable speed drill. 
kind of slow and then it's way too fast. And then it does that. But that's how it's supposed to be done. And was I even in frame? <laughs> I doubt it. One more. Yeah. Then you shove this in that loop. Pull it tight. Make another loop here, but make it go down. Cut off way too much excess. Go, go through this one and around that one with a variable speed drill that doesn't want to be variable speed. And make sure everything stays on the outside. With the camera in the way. And try not to do that. Well, that other one went perfect. Of course, this one won. Well, this is the only one that turned out right. So, I will end up ripping my arm open if I leave it. I'm too weak. So, what I'm going to do is cover it with a little piece of this. Oh, it fits quite nicely. Well, then I just need three hands. And then break out the trusty old heat gun. Still on the warm side. And none of the ones on the inside need it because I won't be running close to them at all. Lo and behold, my piece of wood is too long. It was seven and a half feet, maybe? So I need to cut it. And look what I have to cut it with. And the reason why I'm notching it is because this wood won't turn. And if it's this is the flat of the wood, if this is the flat of the wood, it's a lot stronger. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Got my cross support in. Now I can start putting up my shelves. I figured I can hang them from the hooks. But if the hook is fully open, it likes to pop off when I'm trying to put things together. So I went and pounded them down with the hammer. There we go. You know, you can't do anything without having chickens helping you. I see I'm going to have to really protect the artichoke because they're tasting it. Oh well, back to work. You're going to cut the support for the... Man, I can chew that up good. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's a mess. Let's see if I wedge it in there a little better. Man, I think 
it's hard to hold on to. That isn't any better. Oh, much better. I don't think this saw is meant to cut PVC pipe like that, but now that one's wedged in. It did the job. I got that one in. Definitely need three arms to do half of this stuff. I do put the screw on the top because I don't want it to pull apart. I know it's not going to pull up, but I don't want it to pull apart. Now I thought that wasn't going to be tall enough when I first measured it out. I think it's going to be amply tall. And that is because I keep cracking my head on the five foot pole. I'm 5'2", and I hit that hard just about every time I go in and out. So next step is the plastic. Okay, time for the plastic sheeting. I know this is not greenhouse plastic, but that stuff's expensive. And it's 10 by 25. And I've already given a big chunk to one of my neighbors to line his raised bed with because he couldn't keep it wet enough. He says, well, I put water in it. It runs out the bottom. Well, you don't want it to run out the bottom, not here. So let's see how this is going to go. Well, so far, so good. The way I figure, take the loose end, drop it over, drop it down. It's already up over the top. Take what's left over here and drop it down this other side and then open it up that might be the hardest part is opening this stuff up now I'm not going to be able to go all the way to the ground which is no big deal because the kennel parts are right up against the fence and I'm not going to try to squeeze the plastic through there but Look, I have leftovers. Yay! I will have enough to cover it comfortably. And probably the ends also. Well, since it's 10 feet and these panels are only 6. Yeah, I'll see how that works out. I'm getting there, slowly but surely. But it should be up and running today. I guess it turned out a little short there. We got a lot of sag though, so. And yeah, I gotta bring it back down more. Well, voila. All I have to do is go hunt up my other clips. Too bad most of them are so tough that I can't even open them anymore. But I can start putting the plants back in that are absolutely everywhere. Oh, these are so pretty. I did get rid of a whole bunch of them. They went to another home. Here comes Bufonte. There goes Bufonte able to use the greenhouse, at least parts of it. Other parts haven't got that stuff organized or any of that. But at least I can get some plants started. And that's a wildflower mix. And my butterfly weed. And look at that. I got a tomato. And it's a full size, it's not a cherry. Old refrigerator shelves work beautifully. And this one's nice because I can just set stuff here. As I find it. I'm still missing some buckets. Which has different things in them. when that thing came down I just started pulling stuff out 
and pulling it out and pulling it out and I don't know where it got to. It's been so long. That's the new greenhouse. I think it's going to last more than a couple of years. The plastic won't. I know that. 